It is a wonderful thing to be in the house of God. How many of you believe that? It is a wonderful thing to be in the house of God. In Jesus' name. This morning, I just want to, you know, be grateful to God, first of all, for his mercy. You know, because we are standing where we are. It is by the mercy of God. And, of course, to the leadership of the church, from our senior pastor to our elders to the deacons and to the congregation, for our co your commitment to what God is doing in this place for your commitment to, to the mission and the vision of this church because you believe that God has called Cross Purpose Church in this nation of Australia and around the world to bring freedom, restoration and transformation through the power of the word of God. And that's why you are committed here. There are many churches, as pastor always say, around, but you choose to be committed to them because you believe in the vision of God. And our prayer is that God will richly bless you that God will continue to strengthen you even as we walk on this journey of faith together. In Jesus' name. Today, shortly, it's going to be a very short message. Um, I'm going to share with us on the topic, who do you say I am? Who do you say I am? And our scripture reading is coming from the book of Matthew. If you have your Bibles or your iPhones, iPad, Let's read the book of Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16 from verses 13 to 15. If you are there, say amen. amen. If you need time, say give me time. Need time, okay. Matthew 16, 13 to 15. It's very important for all of us to be on the same page. Father, we thank you. I will read Matthew chapter 16 from verses 13 to 15. It says, When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea, Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others Jeremiah. Or one of the prophet and then chapter 15 it's about Jesus said what about you who do you say that I am what about you who do you say I am in Jesus name you know today's reading offer us one of the profound questions in the Bible that Jesus asked his disciples who do you say that I am. And this is a basic question that I believe all followers of Jesus Christ must answer. And this is not just a one-off thing. It is about, it is meant to be answered at every stage or different stage of our lives. And we answer who is Jesus to us first of all and to the world around us. Because when we think about it, every person on this planet have an idea of who Jesus is. It may, be, it may be different or vary from person to person, but everyone on the planet have an idea of, of who Jesus is. And even us Christians, we have different beliefs when it comes to who Jesus is. And that's why we have different denominations today. Because every one of us believes something different that is slightly different about God or about Jesus than the other person. But regardless of these differences, there is one thing that should stand out that is common to every one of us. And Jesus called his disciples together after having a very you know, beautiful day of ministering and, and teaching and performing miracles. He came in isolation as he normally does. Because he has a moment of public ministry where he teach, where he perform miracles, where he, he does whatever he needed to do regarding the kingdom of God, teaching people, meeting them at the points of their knees. And then there are, there are moments where he had private discussions with the disciples, where he mentored them, where he caught them and, and he taught them about the kingdom of God in depth, in all truth, because he knew that his time was coming and he's going to leave the disciples in charge to minister the word of God. So there were those moments that Jesus went in isolation with his disciples. And this was one of those moments. And he asked them, what do people say that I am? 
And we know this is an easy question. And that's why he started with it. Because he knew that they know the answer. As we read, they started saying, some people say you are a prophet. Some say you are John the Baptist. Some say you are Elijah. Or some say you are, you, you know, you are a good teacher. And then Jesus paused a little bit. But before we go into the next one, you know, I, I, I plan to do something, but it didn't work. But thank God for YouTube these days. I, I went on YouTube and I got a little video that I want us to watch before we continue on this, you know, this message. It's a, I think, two-minute video. So let us please pay attention on the screen, and then we continue from there. And today it's very easy for us, for us to go on the internet, go on YouTube. You know, even as I'm preaching today, you know, for me to talk about Jesus being the Savior, the Lord, the creator of the universe. But it was not so in the days of the disciples. Of course, they may have read, you know, the Torah, you know, but they didn't have scriptures, they didn't have YouTube to go and learn. And these are the people that we are sitting down with Jesus Christ. See if he can show the picture. And they were in isolation, even as I mentioned, that Jesus had those moments where he, he publicly preached the gospel. He goes with them and he ministered and they see the miracles and, and everything that he was doing. But there are moments where he goes in isolation and it was not a beautiful place. It was not in a, in a hotel or somewhere where, you know, they can have the AC on. Sometimes they go into isolation in the desert on the grass and they are sitting down with Jesus Christ without distraction and he asked them who do men say that I am and you saw it was prompt everyone in the group contributed some said that you are a prophet other people think that you, you know you are John the Baptist you are a good guy as we heard from the video you know you are this person that comes full of love that's all I know you are one of the good guys the prophet that came like everyone else some people believe. Some people think he's just a man like all of us. And this is easy. If you go around this room asking people about Jesus Christ, everyone has an idea of who Jesus is. But then the Bible says that Jesus took a step further. He said this is an easy question because it is easy to report what people say. It is easy to report what you heard about Jesus Christ on the radio, on YouTube, or from your friends. But Jesus went a little further and he said, But for you, who do you say that I am? And that's my point of focus this morning. It is true I have heard what you say, what people are thinking of me. What people are saying about my ministry, what people are saying about my influence, about my power to perform miracles, feeding the 5,000, feeding the 4,000, walking on water. It is true I have heard those things. What people are saying about me, how influential, a mentor that I am, a coach. But for you, who am I to you? Hey, it is a personal question that Jesus Christ, just as the way he was seated with the disciples, he is seated with you this morning. Very close to you that you can imagine. Very close to you that you can think. And he's asking you this morning, who am I to you? And many of us, we believe, as I mentioned, we know that Jesus Christ is Lord. We have heard it. And the thing is, whether we believe that he is Lord or not, change nothing, he still remains Lord. Whether we accept it or not, whether people believe it that Jesus Christ is Lord or not, it changes nothing, he still remains Lord. But he's asking you, what is your stand? Where do you stand when it comes to your relationship with him? Who is Jesus Christ to you this morning? Look at your neighbor and tell them, who is Jesus Christ to you? Jesus was not un unaware of their thought. He knew exactly their thought pattern. In fact, the Bible records many times whenever Jesus, you know, was, you know, spoke in parable and the disciples, they were arguing among themselves or they were thinking about the type of person that Jesus is. And Jesus said, exactly, I know what you are talking about. And in fact, in the same scripture where we read Matthew 16, if you look at the uh, preceding verses, when Jesus spoke about the, be careful about the yeast of the Pharisees. And they started discussing among ourselves. 
So maybe he's talking because we didn't bring bread. And Jesus knew exactly. So he was not unaware of their thought. And he knows just like everyone in the world he sees, he knows what we are thinking. He knows where we stand. So he's not asking this question out of ignorance. He's asking because he wants to know where you stand. He sees your thought. And he's asking this morning, who am I to you? He's not asking if you have seen his power at work. He's not asking if, if he is a miracle worker. He's not asking about how influential or how big his church is. He's asking about your personal relationship with him. Do you have your, a personal relationship with Jesus? Aside of what your mom, what your dad, or what your brother, or what your pastor taught, do you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ? And sometimes it is very scary for us as believers, of course, because these things can be traumatic. But, you know, this morning I was very touched when Blessed was leading the prayers. And he said, when you are in the presence of God, always think about you being before God. Because there is going to come a time in our lives where every one of us, we close our eyes. And we go beyond this surface. And we stand before God. And he's not going to ask you, what did your mom tell you? He's not going to ask you, what did your dad tell you? He's going to hold you accountable for your own actions. And at that moment, what are you going to say? What are you going to say? So it's not about knowing Jesus by what he does. In fact, the Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 7, I think from verses 20, 21, he says, not everyone who say unto me, Lord, Lord, we enter the kingdom of God. He says, some will even preach in my name like what I'm doing now. And yes, say you will appear before Jesus on that day. He said, well, you did very well. You performed miracles. You preached in my name. But go away from me because I do not know you. You say, I, I led the worship team and, and I was very powerful. Every Sunday I lead people into worship. You know, I sacrifice to come every Friday for choir practice. And Jesus will say, well done, but I do not know you. Get away from me. Maybe you are standing and you say, I don't miss church. I come to church every Wednesday. Whenever the church door is open, I'm the very first person. But Jesus is asking far beyond the church activities, far beyond your religious commitment, far beyond your dedication to, to maybe to a pastor or to an elder, far beyond your commitment to anything but your commitment to him. And he's asking this morning, who do you say that I am? Who do you say that I am? If you close your eyes today, Maybe you go home and you lie down and you don't wake up. What's going to happen? Are you sure that you're going to make heaven? Are you sure that you're going to meet your creator? That's what Jesus was asking the disciples. He didn't ask them about the ministry that he was doing. Because they already saw that he's powerful. With five loaves of bread, I think seven, he fed 5,000. People, so he could do anything. He walked on water. He was great, but Jesus was looking beyond all those things because he says, "In the last days, there are going to come people that that will even do more than these things. They are going to be false prophets. They're going to perform miracles. They're going to bring words of wisdom. What you think that no one knows? They're going to expose it to you." And Jesus said, "Don't focus on these things. My concern is for you to have a relationship." with me and this morning do you have that relationship with Jesus it is a question that we need to think about Jesus is sitting right with you this morning even as he was with the disciples even as he was with the disciples on that cross sitting down after a long day in their mentorship class who do you say that I am God is asking you this morning. It is a very personalized question. It is a very personalized question. There are many people that have made up their mind of who Jesus is. Regardless of what you say to them, they, they don't mind believing that he's a prophet. As long as you say he's a prophet, they don't have any problem with that. 
If, he's, the, if, if you say he's a miracle worker, they don't have any problem with that because they cannot deny it. They have been in the proofs over and over that Jesus Christ is a miracle worker. They don't have a problem with that. There are people that believe that he's a great philosopher. He teaches. He inspires people. They don't have any problem with that. But when it comes to Jesus Christ being the son of the living God, that's where the problem is. When it comes to Jesus Christ being the only way to the Father, that's where the problem is. And that's what Jesus wants you to know. He said, I'm the way. I am the truth. And I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. There is no other way except through Jesus. There is no other way except through Jesus. And that's why he wants you to know this morning that we can try every other means. There are believers, churches today, that believe by their service, by what they do for God, that they are buying their ticket to heaven. It is good to serve God because we have been purchased by the blood of Jesus to serve him. But our services are just in appreciation for what he does for us. Not to buy our ticket or our way to heaven. Our giving is done in appreciation, recognizing that God, you are the source of everything. And I give you back in saying thank you. But we are not using it to buy our ticket. Because there are people that, that sell their properties. And everything and they give to the church. And they think their sins are going to be forgiven because of that. Jesus wants a relationship with you. Look at your neighbor and ask them, do you have a relationship with Jesus? Ask them, outside of coming to church, do you have a relationship with Jesus? Because that's why he's asking you. Do you have a relationship with me? Do you have a relationship with me? Aside of church, we come to church, we all raise up our hands and worship. But if we step out, do you talk to God? Do you even have time for the word? Some of us, we go home, we drop our Bibles. If we have one, the only time we think about it is when we're ready to come to church the next Sunday. Sometimes, some of us, Sunday, you know, when there's a let us pray, we raise up our hands, we, we pray the loudest. But the moment we step here, sometimes we don't even pray on the Sunday again. And that's what Jesus is asking this way. Do you have a relationship with me outside, outside of the church? Outside of the church, do you pray? Do you spend time with me? Do you know my will? Do you know my purpose for your life? This morning, there are many of us that have confessed Jesus as our Lord and Savior. We know that. We have done that. But how can we strengthen that relationship with him? How can we go beyond the confession? How can we go beyond the church attendance? How can we go beyond our loyalty to, to the pastor, to the church? I don't want to leave the church. Oh, I want to come. If I don't come, you know, my brother, my, my sister, or the elders are not going to feel good. It is good. We need people to come to church. But what we need more is for you to be committed first to Jesus Christ. Because at the end of the day, I will not be accountable to you. Of course, there is a part that I have to play as a servant of God that God has placed me over to watch, you know, his flood. You know, I have questions to answer for that. But when it comes to what you do or what you did with your life, you are answerable. I am answerable. I'm going to stand before God. He's not going to start by saying, you were a pastor. He's going to stand as Joshua. Did you live by my word? Did you do what I instructed you to do? Did you have a relationship with me? And these are the questions. And it will be a good thing for us to hear, well done, you faithful servant. Come into my kingdom. Everyone want to hear that. After we've gone through all these struggles, after we've gone through all these sacrifices, waking on Sunday morning and, and, and doing everything, reading the scriptures, spending time in the presence of God, doing good, helping those that are in need, we are all doing this because we know that we are good people. But beyond being good, our goodness cannot take us anywhere. It is our relationship with Jesus Christ. That's why he's the way. That's why he's the truth. And that's why he's alive. This morning... I just want to share two things with us to help us strengthen our relationship 
with Jesus Christ, the first thing we have to decide, it is a decision that we have to make. Every one of us have a choice to make. You know, there are decisions where a parent and, and, and make them on our behalf, even as we are children. Our way, maybe we are in the group, we allow our leaders to make those decisions for us. But when it comes to your relationship with Jesus Christ, no one can make that decision for you. There are people that will encourage you. There are people that will guide you. Like what we are doing here, we preach. And I'm going to see in the other room teaching and baptism classes. There are all those provisions. We have prayer lines and we do everything. The provision, the resources are there to guide you. But the decision has to come from you. We have to decide that I have given my life to Jesus Christ. I want to live for him. We have to come to that place of making a choice. Like what Joshua said in the book of Joshua, chapter 24, I believe from verse 15. After he has come to the end of his life and he was leaving the children of Israel, and he said, you decide today. You have seen all God has done. I cannot decide for you. I know, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I cannot say the same thing for you. You have to make the choice. You have to make the decision. And that's my encouragement for you this morning. Even as you are watching online or sitting here in person, you have a choice to make. You have a decision to make. Either to live for Jesus. Either to be with Jesus. Or to live doing your own thing. And the second thing that we have to do, or we have to know is that we need to take steps to act upon the faith. We need to take actions. Because there are many of us that have confessed long time ago. We've given our lives to God baptized in the church. We have served in various leadership roles in the church. But we are still acting contrary to our faith. We need to act on the faith. Because the Bible says in the book of James, James chapter 2, verses 14, it says, My brothers or my friends, what good is for one of you to say that I have faith? If your actions do not prove it, can that faith save you? What good is it for us to confess Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, but our life, our actions is not proving it? What good is it? What good is it for us to know that Jesus Christ is Lord, or for us to make up our mind to confess, but our actions are not proving it? And sometimes we are good to, to, to surrender one part of our life to God, but the other we keep it to ourselves. You know, like I, I was sharing that the, the Bible study in Caroline Spring, sometimes we say, God, I trust you and I'm willing to obey your word. Live a holy life. I can do that, God. But then when God say, pay your, your tithe 10%, I have a problem with that. God, I'm willing to live a holy life, but for me to give you my money, I work hard for it. That's exactly what the rich man did. The Bible says he came to Jesus Christ. He said, Master, what can I do to inherit the kingdom of God? And Jesus said, do this one, follow the Ten Commandments. Don't do this, don't do that. And the man said, I have kept all of those. And Jesus said, but there is one thing. Give away your possession. Give them to the poor. And then come follow me. And then the Bible says, the man said, I'm not going to do that. I work hard for this money. You see, it's not about the money, but we saw that this man was willing to let go of certain area of his life. He was willing to follow certain instructions of God, but he was not willing to follow all. And God says, when you break one of his law, you break everything. I don't know where you are. Maybe you are at that stage where you don't mind coming to church because the word of God says, do not forsake the, the gathering together of the brothers. You, you come to church because you, know what, you want to obey God. Maybe God said, do not gossip, and you are not gossiping. Maybe God said, do not commit fornication or adultery. You are not doing that. But there are other areas where you are pulling people down, where you sit down, your eyes alone can kill someone. And, and Jesus said, if you break one of these laws, you are breaking the whole thing. You know, maybe you are not going around and committing fornication because sometimes, you know, I used to get upset with when I was leading the youth. The moment they see two young people together, the first thing that comes to mind is fornication. 
Sometimes you may not go out there, you may not be going, committing fornication and, and everything and adultery, but you are here, you are gossiping about other people every day. So your, what you are doing is equal to that, what the person is doing. You may not be you know, gossiping every day about people, but you hate other people's children. Yeah, we only want our children to rise up. We only want our children to succeed. We only want our children to be at the top. The moment we see another uh, person child, we begin to say things, we begin to do things just to pull them down. We hate other children. And God said, when you hate, you have already committed murder. So you see, sometimes we, we think that we are, we are this self-holy and self-righteous. It is only by the mercy of God. And that's why we need to all the time, every day, come before God and check with God. God, am I in right standing with you? God, I know maybe I made one or two mistakes today, but God, I'm sorry. I want to make my relationship right with you. And that's why Jesus was asking, who do you say that I am? Who do you say I am? And I had a lot of issues, you know, when children, most of them were coming newly to church and, you know, when started church, and most of these girls, they wear, they like to wear, you know, tight stuff, let me say. You know, short skirt. And then they say, Joshua, back then I was not a pastor or a leader or youth leader. Didn't you see that? Don't allow them in the church. So what do you prefer? For them to come to church and get saved, get transformed? Or you want them to go out there and perish? Sometimes we look, oh, we judge the dress. Of course, we encourage modest dressing in the church. That's what we want. But it comes with personal encounter. When someone experiences the touch of God, when someone is transformed by the renewing of their mind, they don't need anyone to tell them they know exactly the right thing to do. But what we can do, if they have not gone to that place, we serve as vessels to encourage them. To encourage them. To lead them. To guide them. But not to pull them down. Not to judge them. Not to look down upon them because of what they are wearing or maybe how they are saying things. It can be challenging. But God wants us to stop looking at what other people are saying when it comes to your faith. When it comes to your decision to follow Jesus and make it very personal. It's a moment where selfishness is allowed. Be selfish about your eternal destiny. Be selfish about your eternal salvation because no one will be there. No father, no mother, no sister. It doesn't matter how much you love. When the day comes, you don't go with them. You don't go with them. You know, the Colonel Lahai, Lahai always shared it. And I've seen that back home when, most especially the women, when the husband passed away. He said, don't leave me, don't leave me. Why are you leaving me? I will go with you. But when the time comes for the barrier, instead of going with him, they start re retrieving backward. <laughs> So you see, it, do, it doesn't matter how much you love someone. It doesn't matter when that time comes. It's a place where each and every one of us we go individually. Where we have to give account individually. We must decide to follow Jesus. And we must act upon it. Because our actions, we prove that yes, we are believers. Our actions, we prove that yes, we have decided to follow Jesus Christ. Our actions, if I can have less on the stage.